I would never know, standing here talking to you, that you would have had an accident like that. Uh, there's no residual effects from it? I mean, maybe down the road, but as, as I stand right now, I always have had a high pain tolerance. Like, I'll get tweets sometimes like, oh, you had so many careers in your injury. It's like, well, not really. I wrestled 20 years, I had one knee surgery, then, then this. Yeah. But in 20 years, I had one knee surgery. Yeah. So, no, I have a pretty high t pain tolerance, actually. And when I tore my knee, I wrestled the next day still. So, I basically dislocated my entire knee. Anyway, my point just being, uh, I try not to let something get me down. If it's not going to, like, pin me down and hold me down, then I'm not going to let it keep me down. Is there anything that has prevented you from doing in your day-to-day -day life? In my day-to-day -day life? Uh, no. I mean, obviously, there are there movements at the gym you can't do anymore? No. Nope. You want to know what's the weirdest, kind of the hardest thing? The hardest thing is like, and it sounds so vain, is like maybe doing like curls or something and trying to like, if the mirror's to the side, like, and have that profile. Like once, like I can do it here, but once I kind of have the weight and locked in, it gets a little harder to move my neck. But yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of like day-to-day, uh, originally and like right after surgery, yes. Wearing, I had that brace for three months. That was pretty rough. Yeah. But um, since then, like more and more mobility came. I got way more mobility than the doctors thought, which is, I, I think, due to I attributed to working out and keeping in shape. So, yeah, man, I it's all good. Is the goal to get cleared to be able to work again, wrestle again? I, uh, I would, when I get asked this, I always say never say never, but. Uh, I'm happy with my job right now. I enjoy it. I, I actually love it. I love, it took a little bit and sometimes those early morning meetings uh, to try to get my workout in and I'm racing around and uh, we have this thing called heart time that I efficiently run on where we're late. And, uh, <laughs> but you got to try to get there on time, especially, you know, before the boss. So, uh, but besides that, I don't know, man, it's, it's hard to say because I, I do feel uh, fulfillment out of what I'm doing right now. So it's hard to, uh, and after being temporary, temporarily paralyzed, it's hard to uh, put a lot of things in perspective. So sure. I don't know. I, I keep saying never say never because who knows down the road. But at the moment, I'm, I'm more than content doing what I'm doing. Have you taken any sort of bump in the last three years? No. I, I sometimes like will get in the ring and kind of play around. Yeah. Uh, especially when I'm putting a match together or come up with an idea. But in terms of like actually falling, no. Did you have any sort of conversations with Draws who kind of went through a similar thing? No, but I have come across, um, like, of course, as soon as I got hurt, like, Kurt Angle reached out to me, and yeah. Steve Austin reached out to me. Yeah. Edge, who, you know, I already, already had a pretty good relationship with. Um, but Draws, no. Uh, that would actually be a great person to talk to. Uh, and, and then just, like, like, I went to UFC, and then um, I was in a green room, and a, a guy in a, in a wheelchair... He asked me for a picture, then we, he just asked what I had fused, and then we got into a big talk about how lucky I was to avoid being in the wheelchair with him, but yeah. also with the little breathing thing. Wow. So uh, I, I've talked to a lot, and, and since I started Instagram, I've gotten a lot of, I posted a thing about my neck, and I got a lot of like people asking me questions how to cope with it and stuff like that. So I don't know, I'm not saying I'm a spokesman for it, but it's like, who knows? It, it's, it's certainly, it you are. You know? like it seems like it like it could happen yeah what do you remember from that night from that move when joe gave it to you uh everything i remember everything wow. very vividly yeah, yeah yeah i lost uh feeling for about five seconds every head to toe oh. it's scary time stands still uh wow. dude you just sit there like in no control whatsoever it's not it wasn't in my control i was at a higher power i was at somebody's mercy just sitting there you can't move anything. All of a sudden, your body feels like it weighs like two million pounds. Wow. And those five seconds must have felt like five yeah. weeks. But in, there was some weird voice telling me, this isn't permanent. Now, in that five-second span, you're doing a lot of, I'm thinking like, this little voice is telling me that doesn't mean this voice is right, though. But luckily, thankfully, it was. And then was it right from there, right onto a stretcher, right to a... Uh, yeah, I ended up going to a hospital. They transferred me to a different hospital. Stayed overnight, then the guy came, uh, the doctor came the next morning and just said, like, hey, I want to do emergency surgery on you. But uh, fortunately, with WWE, we have access to the best of the best. So Natty was really funny. She said, are you the best? And he, the guy said, the doctor said, no, I'm not the best, but I can do it. She said, you're not touching him. 
And uh, I got airlifted a few days later from San Antonio to Tampa. The best guy happened to be in Tampa. And the guy they thought was the best, there's actually a guy better than him that also was in Tampa. Now he's, now he's in Arizona. And but that's where you live, Tampa. Yeah, yeah, so that was easy for me, except like, it was one of those things when I was on the, the, the airlift, I knew, I knew the answer. You, you ever have like, you know the answer, so you don't really want to ask the question? I was like, I know I'm not going home, but in my mind, I was like, oh, we're going to land at Tampa Airport, I'm going to go home. But I knew we were landing, I was going straight to Tampa General Hospital, which is where I went overnight again. Yeah. And then did Samoa Joe reach out to you? Oh, yeah. He came to the hospital that first night uh, when I got hurt, and then we would... Uh, we would exchange texts all the time, and then he was one of the first guys I found when I came back uh, in Los Angeles uh, last June as a producer. He was, I like sought him out. That I mean, wasn't hard to find him, but I found him, and we had a very good talk, and um, we get along well. It's, there's no animosity with, but with me and Joe. It's interesting because of all the moves I feel like could break someone's neck, Muscle Buster would not be at the top of that list, in my opinion. I would just, think it'd be a pile driver or something like that. Just, a, just one of those things that happened. It was uh, it just a perfect storm of whatever it was. And then uh, when we hit, it just, everything went. It was the whitest light I've ever seen in my life. And then, uh, but yeah, we, we have no, there's zero bad feelings That's with good. me and Joe. Yeah, it, it, I, it's, he didn't do it with some type of malice and intent no, at all. So, and he came to the hospital that night, and we're, we're good. When he landed it, did he know something was wrong? I don't think so. I don't think instantly because he pins me. Yeah. One, two, three, which I, I thought, like, I, I was like, I, it was weird. I felt like winded and, like, a concussion. But then it was turned out, it was, it, it's actually called a spinal cord concussion. My, my disc hit the spinal cord. Oh, man. The, the ligament holding the disc, the C2 ruptured, and the disc hit the spinal cord. That's what caused the white light. That's what caused the paralysis. I, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to speak with you, yeah. the fact that you're standing and completely mobile. Yeah, man. I, that's why I'm saying, like, I keep saying it, like, I literally I have zero complaints because yeah. everything's good. 